Hey, my name is Michael Gatewood, and what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about tracing around objects using the pen tool. We have an object that needs to be cut out from its background, and one of the things I'd like to do is show you how we would go about doing this by simply showing you the pen tool and its ways of cutting out an object. The first thing I would do is go to the pen tool. Going to the pen tool, I would place this to pass and uh, you have two options a shape or a path and what I would do is select path and with that we're going to create one simple path let's move layers over to the side and let's look at our pass panel in our pass panel we'll create what's called a working path and um, one of the things that you're going to need to know how to do <coughs> <clears throat> excuse me, is to be able to create a cutout. Now first I guess I need to show you that there's going to be some options that you're going to want to choose to be able to cut out an object and one of them you'll start to think of as the quick or the magic wand tool. If you go in there and start trying to create a selection you're going to see that you can start to get a selection not one that's well defined but what I'm really trying to do is show you the edge. In the edge, when you cut around, you're going to see this jagged edge, and it's not going to be a clean cut. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom out of this for a moment and let you know that this isn't going to be the selection tool, for, not for a product like what we have here in front of us. Control D is, or Command D is actually deselect. So let's go ahead and start seeing about a clean cut around this object by using the pen tool. Using the pen tool and creating a path, we're going to go in and start creating these outlines. And um, one of the other things that we're probably going to want to do is go in here and choose right in here a nice click and get a nice anchor point going and then at that point we would go in and get another click. One other option that I'm seeing that I'm not real happy with is the fact that we have an icon for the pen tool and I think what we need to do is we need to go into our preferences and let's go into cursors and let's choose precise and uh, click OK and that's going to give us the precise symbol. That's going to be a lot better for being able to make sure that these anchor points are hitting the right spot. Now, one other key is to not create too well to not create too many anchor points. So I'm clicking and then bending and getting another selection around this object. And then I'm going to go further down the road and I'm going to go and I'm going to click and I'm going to bend. You're going to see that I'm using the pen tool and laying it down against the object. Now what I'd like to do is I like to make sure that I get it fine-tuned. Control plus sign gets us in a little bit closer and the spacebar allows me to click and move the graphic around. I see right in here that the pen tool is not hitting exactly along the edge like I would like it to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to hold down the control or the command key and move this handlebar so that I can get this path to line up along the object. Now the spacebar to kind of move the graphic around and let's go in here and start putting in the next click for the next part of this anchor point. Control Z is undo. Let's go a little further down the road here and uh, see if we can't line this up properly. And click. Now you can see that we can bend this and move this and manipulate it. This looks like a good first start, but what I'm going to do now is hold down the Alt Option key to move this handlebar in and down and this one a little further in this direction to get it in the right spot. Now we're going to kind of come in a little bit, not too close. There we go and the space bar to move the graphic around. Now what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to click and bend and move it into the right direction. And then at that point another click and then another click and you can see that I'm guiding it into the right direction. You can also see that the handlebar is moved down below the anchor point, space bar to move the graphic. 
If I click here, you're going to see that it loops down. Let me show you by actually coming in a little bit closer. You can see the loop down. Now let's go and go Control Z and undo. We know that this handlebar is all the way down to the bottom, so let's hold down the Alt Option key and click on that anchor point. Now we can click and move this graphic or this line in the right direction. Hold down the command key if you feel like your anchor point hasn't hit the mark exactly. And then we'll go in and we'll click again. Control Z is undo. We see the handlebar is jetted out. Hold down the Alt Option key to click so we can get the direction back that we want. And then back and then back and click and we can see that we're already into a spot where we're getting closer to the end of the bottom of the graphic. Now control Z is undo. When you click and bend you end up with the handlebar in the wrong direction so hold down the Alt Option key so that you can get back into the right direction. Now let's go in here let's finesse this one line hold down the Alt Option key to click and get back into the right direction. Now we're going to go all the way over here and then here and then we're going to go here and click. We've clicked and bent. Now hold down the Alt Option key and click a bent again and now let's go in here and get a nice long click and a nice click and bend to get around the object. Hold down the Alt Option key to click again to get into the right direction for the next click and then we click again and then click and bend to get the angle and the bend properly set. Now hold down the Alt Option key to click and get the angle back. Then we go up here and we click. We're going to see it doesn't line until we move the handlebar out. Get this into the proper direction. Now hold down the Alt Option key again to get into this area to bend just this handlebar without changing the direction of the other handlebar. Now let's click and bend. Hold down the command key or the control key to get this into the right spot. Hold down the space bar to click and drag around and then we click and then we click and bend and we get this into the right direction and then back into the right direction. Hold down the Alt Option key to click and get back into this location so that when we click to create the other anchor point we get into the right angle. Then hold down the Alt Option key again to click and then click and then click and bend. Hold down the Alt Option key to click on the anchor point and then click again to the right angle and then a click and bend and you're going to find that this is going to be about as tough as it gets for being able to click and bend and get this into the right direction. I'm using this kind of piece of furniture in order for you to understand that these are these two power keys, the Alt Option key and the Command key or the Control key are going to be critical for you the master to be able to get this into the right direction for this kind of cutout. Now I'm kind of clicking these because they're more of an angle but if I don't hold down the Alt Option key and click and get rid of that handlebar it will not go into the direction I'm looking for for this other bend spacebar and then hold down the Alt Option key to click and get into the right angle and back at the right angle. Hold down the Command key to get it right into the right spot and then we're going to go and we're going to click and we're going to start bending this line to match in to this piece of pottery that needs the right angle. If you put too many anchor points into this direction, you will end up with what we consider a very, 
very choppy curve. Now I'm holding down the Alt Option key again to grab this one anchor point, space bar to click and drag and move the graphic around and getting a nice bend in this area but I need to hold down the Alt Option key to click here to get into the right angle. Now I'm going to bend and you're going to notice that if this is not in the right angle of the, of the uh, selection you hold down the Alt Option key to click and lose that little direction and now when I click and bend I'm getting a nice curve right in here but you're going to notice something. It might be right there but I have to hold down the Alt Option key to get into this point to kind of move it around and bend it where I need it. And uh, hold down the uh, command key to kind of get this into the right direction. And hold down the Alt Option key to kind of bend this into the right little area there. Now if I do not hold down the Alt Option key and click on this next anchor point, there's no way I can get it back in to this direction for the other side of this pottery. Now I'm bending but holding down the Alt Option key to make sure that I can get into the right angle for this next clip and cut. Hold down the Alt Option key to click to lose that anchor point so that when I click here I can click it into the proper bend for this piece of pottery. You're going to see with that kind of bend that if I don't hold down the Alt Option key and click on the last anchor point and then the Command key to kind of change that anchor point and even adjust this handlebar ever so slightly to get it into the right spot, I'm going to end up with the kind of selection that I'm not happy with. You're going to find that although this looks easy, this is going to take a little bit of practice and that you're going to have to get down the Alt Option key and the Command key to get these anchors into the right spot and the bend in the right spot. And without the ability to understand these power keys, you are going to have the biggest time of trying to get this into the right location. Now I'm going to hold down the command key to kind of get this back into the right location. And I'm going to click now and give myself again another curve, hold down the Alt Option key to lose that last anchor point so that I can start getting into these little nooks and crannies of what would be a very tough selection. And we're looking for this clean, clean cut that's going to get us over here. I click and drag, hold down the Alt Option key, click get that right in there for the right angle and then at that point I'm going to click and close. Now what we have is we have an outline. Just to let you know on this outline let's create transparency by getting rid of the lock, going in and getting our selection squared away. Now we have the selection let's go in here and go select, inverse and then cut and now we have transparency around this item. What I like to do is I like to go in here and add or create, excuse me, a new path. So let's go in here and create a new path so we can save this one. Then create a new one. <clears throat> and you can be path too. Now we can close one path and create a new one, but this might be one of your better bets for being able to control both separately. And then what I'm going to do is simply go in here and do a quick cut inside. Let's go control plus sign to zoom into our product and then click and click and then click and bend. Now that handlebar looks like it's taking on the proper direction. So I did a nice little click, 
but the next one's not in the right direction so I'm going to hold down the Alt Option key click and click and bend to get the next curve in position and then hold down the Alt Option key again to click and get the right angle hold down the Alt Option key to click again and click again and we're ending up with the proper direction here now I'm going to hold down the command key because that anchor point didn't look like it was hitting the right spot and then I'm going to click kind of keep it into the right direction click and bend looks like it's going to go back into the right direction and click and bend and be right about in the right spot but I'm going to hold down the command key to kind of click and whoops control Z is undo I'm going to click on that one anchor point to kind of get it in the right direction now what I'm going to do is load this as a selection inside and then get it a quick cut now the one thing that I'd like to do is kind of zoom in and show you exactly how sharp those cuts are around this object once you have that then you have an outline around the object you can move it you can go in here and go control T you could resize it I'm holding down the shift key to do a proportionate reduction we'll kind of put it in position we'll hit enter we can add a new layer we can fill with white white there we go and we can move that down below the object and then we can also even think about adding a new layer and maybe consider a little drop shadow action let's see if we can get a nice soft round and kind of bring this around the object looking at its light source maybe we want something that's a little more in this direction here and we'll go in here and add a filter a blur a Gaussian blur let's go ahead and really blur that a little bit really get those edges soft and maybe just maybe a little opacity change to show a little bit of a drop shadow I always like to add a um, little bit of a mask white reveals black conceals and then a nice softening of this shadow underneath the object and when we want we can always come in a little closer into the object with a small brush to emphasize a little more shadow maybe right underneath the bottom of this object and once we have a little bit of drop shadow in there then at that point we have the floor that we're looking for but one of the things that we have now is an object without the background a clean cut using the pen tool remember your power keys command that's the control key on windows and alt option for being able to control your pen tool for being able to get around the object and making sure that you can get a clean cut under control my name is michael gatewood and thanks for watching